This is what seems to have upset Australia and New Zealand in particular, and that is the muzzling of the press. Why was it necessary to do that? Why, uh, why are they worried about that? If I don't muzzle the press, uh, is it going to bring extra food on the table? No, but freedom of expression is a cherished freedom notion, of, not freedom. just amongst Australian and New Zealanders, but, but Fiji people as well. Yeah, but uh, is anyone feeling it? Uh, you, you There's ask... no political news in the newspapers, is there? Well, <laughs> you put rugby back on the front page. <laughs> and that's the way things should happen in Fiji. Rugby back on the front page. No, I, I really don't see any reason why we should uh, uh, let the press... It's not only insightful messages that we're worried about. It's uh, uh, irresponsible reporting that's done by the media. That's, that's, uh, that's something that we really don't need right now. But do you recognise that that is probably one of the most damaging things for your international reputation, that you not only don't seem to tolerate dissent, you won't allow free expression? No, I allow free expression. That's why they print the papers every day. That's why they, the TV is on and the radio, everything is broadcast. It's irresponsible reporting that I don't like. How long will you have your censors in the country's newsrooms? When will that end? Well, until we're sure that uh, we can continue down this path without any opposition from uh, people who bring out uh, insightful messages. And that's, that's the bit we're worried about. But not only that. Graham, we have the shortest five years in our history to do what needs to be done until election. By the time we have election, we would want to change the way we think. We have to think outside the box that we've been thinking in in the last 30 years. We need to do things different from what we've been doing in the last 30 years. But not only that, we have to get rid of racism in the country in the next five years. Racism. Racism. By the time we have election, we want to have an election that people will recognize that will bring about democracy, true democracy to Fiji. What is true democracy, well, in your view? Well, at least we get rid of racism in the country. There'll be no racist policies that have been the hallmark of the government in the last uh, decade. Uh, we need to get rid of that because that brings about corruption. You, I think if you stay a while in Fiji, we'll show you uh, how uh, corruption is rife in, in Fiji in all the government departments. Uh, that is so bad that it's stopping uh, service delivery by the people who are paid, the taxpayers, to provide that service. This is going to be a long process, though. It's going to be a long process. If at the end of five years you haven't changed attitudes, will you then postpone an election again? No. Hopefully, by that time, we will, we will have put in place uh, uh, issues that uh, will ensure that that is removed. So you are giving a cast-iron guarantee here today that in five years' time you will have an election? Five years' time we'll have an election. Can I ask you why the international community should believe you when you'd already made one of these promises before? And that was that you'd have an election this year. I came up with a reason for that. And nobody tended to believe me. Uh, and what was the reason? Well, in Tonga, the day, the Sunday, the Sunday night before the Monday meeting, I had, um, uh, had an informal chat with uh, the Tongan Prime Minister, who was in chairman of the, the forum. Mm. And he said, look, there's a there's a lot of um, uh, pressure on us, on the forum and on you, mm. me, as Prime Minister, uh, for the date of election to be, um, to be arrived at. So he said, why don't you come up with uh, 2009? Oh, so he put the words in your mouth, is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah, so I said, uh, what if we want to change? Well, we will talk about it later on. Let, let's come up with 2009. So 2009 came up. So what was a possibility in your mind turned into something written in stone yeah. by the other forum members? Yeah. Do you expect to be suspended by the forum? Uh, suspension from the forum? Mm. No one has ever been suspended from the forum. Well, if you believe the Prime Minister of Niue, this is about to happen to you. Is he the forum? He's the chairman of the forum. He's the chairman of the forum, but the forum needs are the all Pacific Island nations that get together and make the decision. He doesn't make the decision. 
nor does New Zealand make the decision, nor does Australia make the decision. In fact, if it was up to me, we would remove Australia and New Zealand from the forum. Why would you want to do that? Because uh, they're putting unduly pressure on, on uh, the Pacific Islands, and that's not how we operate in the Pacific. Fiji was one of the initiators of the forum. Why would they want to suspend Fiji? Is there killing on the roadside? Did you see that when you, as you come up to the military camp? No. Is there, why suspend Fiji then? Just because we don't happen to go along with what the Austra Australians and the Kiwis want? You're getting some traction from your island neighbours, aren't you, or with your island neighbours. The congressman for American Samoa uh, told Hillary Clinton in Washington uh, during the week that uh, there was another side to what was happening in Fiji. Uh, and she indicated that she'd listened to that particular point of view. What did you think about that? Well, I think that's great, because he's someone who understands what's happening in Fiji. And, in fact, she should listen to his, uh, his advice. She said that she would listen to his advice and conceded that much of her information was coming from Australia and New Zealand. Do you hope that because of that intervention things might change from the American point of view? Yes, I'm, I'm hoping it'll go that way. And I'm hoping that uh, at least she'll have somebody else besides Australia and New Zealand to listen to uh, in regards to what's happening here in Fiji. Prime Minister, let's talk about the economy. It's in free fall. You're in very big trouble. Your foreign reserves are down to less than three months. You've got a huge balance of payments deficit. How concerned are you about the economy? How worried are you? Uh, <clears throat> our reserve is not uh, below three months. It's, uh, the last count was below uh, 1.8 months. And we're very concerned about our economy, like everyone else. That was one of the reasons why we devalued the dollar, the Fiji dollar, mm. uh, about uh, two weeks ago. That would help our reserves. I can see that the rest of the region and the rest of the world is having many of the same problems as you, there's a global recession. But a lot of your economic difficulties are due to the current political crisis. You'd, you'd acknowledge that, wouldn't you? No, I, uh, I disagree. Well, if, I mean, for instance, if, if there weren't travel advisories out on Fiji from Australia and New Zealand and other countries, you'd have more tourists here, wouldn't you? Well, yes. We had travel advisories against uh, tourists coming to New Zealand, <coughs> coming to Fiji from New Zealand and Australia. We had a record high last year. That didn't stop uh, people from Australia and New Zealand coming in. They, we would expect more now since we've developed the dollar. It's going to be 20% cheaper. It's going to be 20% cheaper. So for all of uh, the Australians and the Kiwis listening in right now, I invite you to come to Fiji. Can you guarantee that they'll be safe, that they'll be secure here? The, there's never been any security problems with tourism because we protect our, our tourist industry. If you uh, look at the statistics in the last couple of weeks, uh, crime has fallen drastically. It, in fact, it's in today's papers that crime has dropped considerably in the, last, uh, in the first quarter of this, this year. So uh, we're worried about the economy, but uh, we can also take care of uh, the security uh, issues. Let's not do worry too much about those. You'll be tough. We'll be tough. Can I ask you, how safe is your own position? My position as uh, the Prime Minister? As Frank Barney Marama continuing to live prosperously in Fiji? Uh, what, what are you saying? Uh, is there a threat to my uh, life? That's what I'm asking you. Um, no. There's no threat to my life. None whatsoever? None whatsoever.